God has an expectation. God has a plan to see his expectation met. But the generation must come in alignment. And we say yes to Jesus. Ibarasya tabo meka baba kamande kaidatos. We will hold nothing, Jesus. You want the generation, we offer you on. Let the waitings come to an end. sustain my sharing because um, I, I sense that it's a season. So I gave an instruction this morning that yesterday's sermon should be retitled. It should be retitled as embracing the revival. So leave the one online that way but retitle that sermon. It will be part of a series that I know that people will come into in the future. Second Chronicles chapter 7 Verse 13. If I shut up the if I shut up heaven, that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. If, next verse, my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven. I said to us yesterday that until this set or, or this protocol... A protocol is a set of steps that lead to an ultimate outcome. Until this protocol is perfected, God said, I will not hear. So it is possible to tarry in the place of prayer and God not hear your prayer. It's only your neighbor that says, Kai! God will soon come. Then will I hear from heaven and we forgive their sin 
It means that forgiveness happens in this case when it is a territorial labor at a particular junction. It doesn't start in the beginning. I will hear from heaven, then I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Verse 15. We didn't read that yesterday. It says, now my eyes shall be opened. It means God can shut his eyes. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayer. It was speaking about the house of God. Unto the prayer that is made in this place. It means that it is not every time that we pray in church buildings, in church congregations that God hears. It is not every time he sees our prayer. It means prayer can be seen, prayer can be heard. And so I began yesterday to give us a six-layered expression that we give voice in a more organic way to this thing. And we stopped at, um, at humbling ourselves. So give me back verse 14. We have realized that we are a people called by his name. And as a people called by his name, we are seeking redemption for our nation. That heaven begins to create um, instruments of transaction that can buy our nation back from slavery, can buy our nation back from the name that we have been called. We were in the house this morning, and I'm sure many of you have those videos on your phones too. This 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 our hundred meter hurdle runner. How many of you have seen it? Now, what I, I saw some people advertising because the lady said, "Well, I, I'll do my best, and I, and I'll still do better than my best." So in two races, two races, because the fastest was about twelve seconds, uh, twelve yes, twelve seconds, twenty six microseconds. So in heat. And that's in semi-final. She did 12.12. And then finally she did 12.06. That's massive. I was sharing with my wife that the fastest lady 100 meters without obstacle in the world, he's running at about 11.89. It means if with obstacles you can do 12.06, we have in the making the fastest lady in the world. But there was, so she got gold, but there was another lady who won a medal in long jump. How many of you saw her video? Now, she said that, what's the other lady's name? Eh? No, no, no. This, uh, this Nigerian lady, she's from Ijebote. Eh? You said, Toby Amusa. You see, Damrola has given her Bolaji. She's Toby. This other lady who won, I think, a bronze in long jump, said when we saw what happened with Toby, then we switched into the spirit and began to speak in tongues. That's what she said. So it was that route that took her into a medal. Switched into the spirit and began to speak in tongues. Now, the interview was not a church interview. And I told them, I said, this is what the revival looks like. It is God in every place. Have you seen this lady who God, you see, because when God wants to flex, he will flex. Yes, I know Nigeria didn't get a medal in the just concluded women's championship. But the girl who shined for Jesus still went home with a joint top scorer medal. What it meant was that the person she shared with still played matches more than she played. But there was a system that didn't allow that person to outscore her. Because she had a red card, so she didn't play full matches. That's Rashida Tajibadi. And it stunned me that it was a Rashida that wore Jesus boldly. Uh, <laughs> you see, the unlikelies are the ones that we shine. There were blessings in that group. Oh, because they, took, they went, it was not just in her on the field. It was off field. She, all her under clothes had, there was a Jesus is Lord, there was a Jesus um, is the way, the truth, and the life, with the quotation, with her blue hair. I know you are wearing black hair. You think that blue hair people are crazy people. You are the only one that thinks like that. 
Because when I went to preach at, um, what's this school now? At, um, at Foye, or Yekite. I raised a cry that God needed a few intercessors. And the first one that was caught was a girl with brown hair. All of her hair was brown. I'm not saying make your hair like that, but you see, let me quote Pastor Irem. If you say that colored hair, if you get to heaven and you find out that colored hair does not matter, it's okay. It's okay that you labor to be to stay on one side that my hair must be black. Even if it if it is color three, you will tint it to color one because it must be black. It's good to live extreme like that so that in trying to find the balance, you don't slip away. Are you with me? But I'm saying that if you take that extreme and you don't know what you're doing, people who you thought were hanging in the middle will be better than you. I'm not saying go and get a new body tattoo. But there will be people with body, who already have body tattoos who because they could not cut off their skin came to Jesus and said, I align and the fire will fall on them. So, you that have not flexed to get a tattoo, you are still not serious with Jesus. You think that because you don't have a tattoo, you are, you are on a throne and the ones who have it are on the ground. You, you are just managing to wear an earring. You don't have a nose ring. And you think because you don't have a nose ring, you are superior. I'm not saying go and do these things. Are, are you getting me clearly? I'm not making legitimate those things. Because they are also extremes. It will be difficult for you to preach the gospel with a nose ring. That one that looks like a horseshoe. They hang it from the back, then it comes on this side. It will be difficult to preach the gospel. But if you have become like that, if you still find your way, You'll be accepted like that. I saw Rashida even in her in her in her leisure times. She could not she could not listen to what some Christians listen to. Her songs were still tailored that way. If you saw her goals, her goals, her hands always pointed in one direction, was up. Many of us have, we have found a reason to glory. I'm saying that now people use prayer to flex. They use the loudness of prayer. They use the, the longevity of prayer to flex. And you see, those kind of enterprise, that kind of enterprise will not occasion a revival. It will give God the license to bypass that person. That's what we learned yesterday. Humble yourselves. Do I know my competencies in the kingdom? I know ministers a lot. I know some book that can, that except God specially gives them. They can't replicate my realities. I know. But it's not a reason to boast. It's unchristianly to, to boast in what God has given you. It's unchristianly. There are, many things that we're, there are many things that we're doing that did Jesus function like that? Hey, ah, George Esu. In the cross, in the cross, be my glory ever. See my wrath. Church shall find rest beyond the river. One last testimony. Many years ago, I had the privilege to, you know, I've been following Prophetess Wantabinon for long. I still do. I know people don't like her, but I still do. I still love her. I still love her. There was a conference she had many years ago. She was with Paula White and uh, Bishop Hilliard's wife. And they used to call the conference Women on the Front Line. It's for the, the, 
major set of female ministers in the U.S. So I think it was 2004 or 5. They hosted it in the church of a particular pastor. And you know, all of them had prepared. Wanda Bynum was the person to listen to when they used to listen to her. Her faith was, is like the faith of Catherine Kuman. Marriage gone wrong, ministry reduced in, potent, in intensity. There was this other lady. If, so, so if you go online, you will see her. Her name was Prophetess Sharon, say, Eland. Very small young lady. So, Sharon say, Elan was given the privilege to come and lead a 10-minute prayer. Let me give you, Sharon say, Elan's CV. And she gave birth out of wedlock at age 14. But her pastor said, I know you are pregnant, but you are an evangelist. God has forgiven your sin of adultery or fornication. But you still have a child to show for it. So, the child is not a sin. You are still an evangelist and you will minister in this church have you seen that kind of church before what they do is that they evacuate that person they take her to a corner that's why we have so many divorce so many abortion cases in church because the church cannot allow a lady who got pregnant out of wedlock to sing in the choir god has forgiven her because the day she slept with the boy she said god forgive me and god did and she never went there again but she has a pregnancy to show for that act so God has forgiven, but the church doesn't forgive. Because we have PR. They must not see us as a church. That is, I was saying it in Zaria, that if people sleep with themselves before marriage, the church still joins them. Where it becomes a problem is if they get pregnant and they retain it. Abby? That's holiness. <laughs> so, she got pregnant. She brought her son to the church. She was 24 that time. Cyrus, that was his name. She, ten years. she even used Cyrus. Okay, that was so Cyrus was nine when the event happened. So she joined them, a woman on the front line the following year. When Tabinom said, when that lady led prayers from the word for 10 minutes, she was afraid to preach. And God, what did you do to this young lady? If when Tabinom says, what did God do to you? You are gifted. I give them. Ah. She was a steward of the presence of God. If you go on YouTube and download the video, the mercy seat, she ministered with Vicky Oye. It was that simple. I'm running to the mercy seat. Nobody, I mean nobody, over 5,000 people could stand under the weight of the presence. Everybody was beaten to the ground. That was the only thing they could do in the sermon. It was just that song. It was just that song. So if that lady sees a 24-year-old girl and says, I can't preach. I can't preach. And then she preached the sermon the following year. Destiny will not stop here. I still have it on my system. Strong conviction. She will, that, that sermon will push out anybody struggling in the middle line. Trying to bring God or out of God into it. She was screaming holiness unto the Lord. Holiness unto the Lord. There will be strange faces in the revival. I have a prophecy in one of my books. There was this prophetic minstrel that is late now. What's his name in the US? He plays the keyboard and begins to prophesy. Kim Clement. I was listening to him sometime last year. And a cloud, two years ago, and a cloud descended into my house. And then the Lord began to say many things to me that I cannot say. Because they don't even look like what we're preaching. But what he showed me. I said one of them here. That you see, those that will feature in this revival, he will save them. They will not look like us. But he will keep them. When they come into church, we think that tomorrow they will go back to the streets. But he will keep them. And they will be the icons of the revival. It, it tackled my theology that no, you know, they need many years of discipleship. He said, The one who saved them will teach them. You know why he needs to do that? Because he's not sure if they will be taught. You know, if somebody crosses from DJ outside there and enters church, 
When he gives his life to Christ today, where does he go to? He goes to man the consul. They want his, their, his abilities that made him a champion in Babylon will instantly be converted. Oh, you have a good voice. They will force the choir leader to make her lead worship on Sunday. We use people. We don't raise them. These are many things that we will come face to face with when brokenness begins to happen. Because I said to us yesterday that in humility, the word of God will be recovered back as the book of the law. And when that is established, those who interface, it will first be preached and then it will be clearly taught, distinctly taught. The hearts of many will break. It is that heartbreak that will bring us to the second instruction in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. It is that they will pray. So let's go into scriptures. We want to see. We've been studying the recovery of the temple in from the book of Nehemiah. So the recovery of the word, the recovery of brokenness, and the thought will be supplication. Somebody say supplication. What is supplication? Because in the epistles, Paul made an attempt to break prayer down or to advertise prayer as a faculty. A faculty. And in advertising prayer as a faculty, he goes further to advertise prayer as a, an enterprise that can be expressed in departments so that you have a kind of prayer that is called thanksgiving. You have a kind of prayer that is called prayer. And that's what we call petition. So if I say bring prayer requests. God I want a watch. God I want a shoe. God I want a car. Uh, for you it may be God I want a wife. Whatever you That's what we call petition. You know what thanksgiving is. We have been trained to give thanks. After we have seen what God has done. Wise men give thanks when there is the witness of the Holy Spirit that has been perfected. Are you with me? So thanks keep. But it's, it's an act in appreciation of a reality that has been encountered or an intervention that has been received. That's thank, that's thanks keep. What other ones do we see in scriptures? Intercession. Intercession has to do with taking on the responsibility of becoming a bridge between God and another. So he's praying for other people. Filling up a gap. So that other people. Causes that are. and What causes I mean. C-A-U-S-E. Causes. Issues. Situations that are beyond you. When you take that posture. That's intercession. So an intercessor does not labor. Over himself. In intercession. He prays for other people. He prays for other cities. He prays for ministries. He does all of that. For everyone who wants to engage in intercession, I want you to go and listen to that message I preached in the Union show last week titled, The Gatekeeper. The gatekeeper is a prophetic intercession. The gatekeeper is also what we call a watchman. So all those three names define the same person. They don't come, sir, to prayer with a prayer point. That's how intercessors pray. In petition, we pray with the knowledge of a situation. Somebody is sick, heal him. That's petition. I've checked my pocket, money is finishing. An intercessor comes to pray and only to engage God so that he can receive a prayer point to pray. So, intercessors pray by inspiration and not by situation. Are you with me? So, you can come and say, Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. And then he begins to pray in tongues. 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 Or begins to ask in understanding, Lord, what do you want to pray? What, what do you want me to partner with? And then the inspiration comes. Most times the inspiration does, has, not, or has not manifested on China's TV. That's an intercession. The Bible also says that there is a branch of prayer that, or a department 
in the faculty of prayer that is referred to as the department of supplication. Supplication shows up because of the notion that it is possible that the man who has approached unto God is not an accurate man. That there are things that are wrong about the man who has approached unto God. He, he, may be, he, may be, he may have scored well before men, but before God, there are still fractures in his existence. There are still uh, misconceptions in his perception of God. There are still abnormalities in the expression of his life. And so what he does is that he becomes like one who pleads before God. God, if you are willing, please help me out of my infirmity. So what Jesus prayed in that portion that we read in um, Luke chapter 22 is supplication. If you be willing, let this cup pass over me. Nevertheless, not my will, but my will be done. Every time you become a supplicant, you approach unto an altar of death because ultimately your will will die. And I've told people, maybe the reason why I pray this way I'm praying is that about 75% of my private prayers is supplication. I don't pray for power. I don't pray to be popular. Those things are cheap. Because you can collect power and popularity into a willful nature. And you will ruin the purposes of God. Are you with me? I'm not saying those prayers are wrong. You can be praying them. But make sure you are also supplicating. I found how my God, how my Lord became strengthened. Because when he made an end of that prayer, the Bible says God sent angels to him, that angels came to him, and they strengthened him. That's how to, if you want to stay uncompromising, you must find the path of supplication. You want to think differently from the people in your age. It's natural to be like everybody. But supplication will make you unlike everybody. The things that tempt men will not have power over you. You will see them too, but you will keep walking. Are you with me? Supplication. Supplication. The kind of prayer we pray this evening is supplication. Lord, I'm too rigid. If you are willing, bend me. But in case I'm too hard and you can't bend me, like reverence broken finger, can you break it so that you can bend it? It is captured in scriptures that the one who bruises is also the one who, who mends. That's how God operates. It's the one, it, it's the one that, that fractures you. That offer babe, only babe, babi. And then when you cry, he's the one that will still come to console you. Are you with me? That's the kind of prayer that backs revival. Not to use me. When we have been animated by the rains of heaven, we can now say, use me. Because it was not, you didn't, we didn't hear in scriptures about everybody in the 120. It means that all were quickened, but only few were used. Are you with me? Ah. We don't even know the names of some of the 120. It means that there will be men whose names will not be known even when the revival comes. It's, the revival is not a passport to popularity. It's not. It is, it is, it is, it is, a, it is the creation of a highway. That God, it is God who becomes popular. So it's, in revival we create a highway for God to express himself without hindrance. It's not for you to be popular. We beg him. We plead with him. What makes supplication effectual is that it's a, it's a prayer of a broken man. We have come to the end of ourselves. Take over, Jehovah. We have touched the end of ourselves. Take over. That's, that, that's, that's how, the, so until you have been shown the end of yourself, 
and you can't become a supplicant. If they tell you to pray that prayer point, after two minutes, you'll be asking why. What do you need strength for? What do you need might for? You don't have an assignment, but you want to be anointed. Have you gone to an impartation meeting before? Somehow. Many of the people who want power don't have purpose. If in today's Nigeria, you buy a generator, your house is not wired. Or there are no bulbs. You don't have appliances. It's empty house. You now power generator and pour fuel into it. And then you are running it. You just want to show that I have generator. Even the people who have generator are rationing in it. That's what it looks like. Producing, possessing power, but powering nothing. So we played with him. That was what happened to Ezra and his brethren. They wept. We saw it yesterday. Let, let's, let's go back and read it so that we can travel. We read last from Ezra chapter 9 from verse 4, but you give me today from verse 6. Ezra, Ezra, not Nehemiah. Okay. Um, okay, so let's do from 4. Let's do from 4. Then were assembled unto me everyone that trembled at the words of the Lord, of the God of Israel rather, because of the transgression of those that have been carried away and that sat astonished until the evening sacrifice. At the evening sacrifice, I rose up from my heaviness and having rent my garment and my mantle, I fell upon my knees and spread out my hands unto the Lord my God. This was grief, brokenness. Verse 7, he entered into prayer and said, Oh my God, I am ashamed. Can you see the kind of prayer? And blush to lift up my face to thee. For our iniquities are increased over our head. And our trespass is grown up unto the heavens. Let's go on. Since the days of our fathers have we been in a great trespass unto this day. And for our iniquities have we, our kings and our priests been delivered into the hands of the kings of the lands to the sword, to captivity, to a spoil, and to confusion of face as it is this day. The church, the average believer and the church in Nigeria must come to a place of acknowledging that we have become slaves in our nation because of our iniquity. That's supplication. If you look at it clearly, you see, the setting for the prayer of supplication is a court setting. What is a request he wants to make is petition that will end it. But he wants to give a legitimate premise for his request. That we also acknowledge that we are guilty. We won't just say, Lord, look at our enemies, strike them. That's even a good prayer. So we pray, Lord, all your enemies in Nigeria, strike them. <laughs> you may be one of God's enemies. That, that your life stands, it stands against what he's doing. Somebody will have gotten saved until they heard you talk. Even as saved as I am not, I, I cannot say this thing. So you speak in tongues and you say this thing. I'd rather not be saved. So same people used to dress like this. Ah, this one by wearing JJ, let's be managing it. If this is what the Holy Ghost does, because the Holy Ghost has been largely misrepresented. In Nigeria, is the spirit of comedy. Because we believe that anything that happens in church is the Holy Ghost. He said, no, we have to do everything to save them. Including bring an unbeliever to church. One of U.S.'s um, bishops, I won't mention his name because he's late, so out of honor, I will not mention his name. 
but we have been following them. He died maybe about two, three years ago. There was a time he was trying to speak to his um, youths. Who is this guy that sang Unleash the Dragon? I think DMX. Oh, Cisco. Is this Cisco? Okay, you don't know those names. Don't worry. I know it's Davido, you know. Just take him. But this guy is, this guy, now if you listen to the lyrics of Unleash the Dragon, you will understand that, that it was a song in priesthood. It was like a, a gate, it was a gatekeeper to open the hearts of young people into the fellowship of a strange spirit, a being. Unleash the dragon. I know you don't really want it. Unleash the dragon. That it is not something you are okay with, but still release the dragon. He was doing a youth conference. And one of his speakers was the singer of that song. He just felt okay. Our youths, oh, they follow this guy. So let's bring him to church. I used to have the script because some people wrote out the script that that guy. He said, if you don't have it, you don't have it. It's like people who take Tonto DK to church to, to, to advise their youth to preach. I think she started doing that thing in South Africa, Shepherd Bushiri's church. They had a youth convention and she was one of the speakers. Amen, amen. Because, no, no, go online and check. She spoke in tongues. Amen. And the Lord, you, you, you know, she was copying our brother in Umaya. You know, our brother in Umaya, if he's preaching, he says two lines and he enters tongues. He says two lines. That's how she was talking. You know, God really wants you to, 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 be, to be good. And, 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 ah! Hello, Uncle Suru. We have another evangelist from Nollywood. She's big. She's light. If you know her, you know her. She came last week. I saw a video last week where she was saying that she doesn't know what is wrong with people who say that premarital sex is wrong. She's an evangelist. So somebody established her an evangelist. Now, how can people be in a relationship and um, they love each other, but they won't be sleeping with each other. The way people become evangelists in this nation is, is, is terrible. Evangelists far. Fivefold essence. You know, if you keep traveling like this, you get to another town. There's an evangelist there too. Name we held. He does everything except evangelism. His house is an altar. Many women, many ladies have been slain on that altar. I don't mean died though, but they have been slain. It's a slaughterhouse. But it's an evangelist. A church went to Shogo some years ago and did a meeting. And Aregbe gave them land to build something. And one of them, one of the big people in the church, a deaconess, came and said, Ah! See, Aregbe is now an evangelist. I said, How? They say, they say he, he supported the work of God. You are fake people. You are fake people. Is it by, do, do they reward people with titles? Like some people want to reward somebody with president. That this person has been contributing money to church, so let's make him a deacon. Is it that our Bible does not lack demand? You know that what produced deacons in scriptures, some apostles have not met up with it. We must admit that we are wrong. I said it in Abel Kuta yesterday. Muslim Muslim tickets started from 2020. Why? We were non-essential during COVID-19. Abi, were you going to church? Did you not stay in your house? Abi? And if we came to church, they gave us numbers. See only 10 people. I used to join early morning service in House on the Rock. As big as that rock cathedral is, you see scanty people. There must not be more than a particular number. Why? Because we are non-essential. They believe we don't have the potency. 
So I was reminding them of the healing rooms in Spokane. How that A. Allen does not, it doesn't, if people are sick, he doesn't disturb himself. He has healing rooms. He has people who are in training in the healing ministry. You say you have won, you are passed. Mark that room. Some of the people who are in the healing rooms have viruses and the viruses have marked their bodies. The proof that you have won against that virus is not that the person stops coughing. It's that the marks on his body disappear. <laughs> so, you can be there for days. You will only come out when that person is totally normal. But the nation started carrying sick people there because they knew that the hospitals could not solve this in record time. Now we have been termed non-essential. So if you put clergy in front of your car and you were out, they say there's monkey pox out again. So maybe we're about to go inside again. These are things that the church should, they, they will happen because Jesus said they will happen, but the church should solve them cheaply. We must confess that we are overrated. We are not as powerful as we think. Let's take the prayer further. Next verse. We'll go to 10. And now for a little space, grace has been shewed from the Lord our God to leave us a remnant to escape and to give us a nail in this holy place. Not a space, but a nail. You do, do you know what a nail looks like in a house? He's saying we are not even flexing. We know that you are just giving us a rare opportunity to be able to feature in your holy place. Now we glory in redemption, but our lives don't look redeemed. A nail in his holy place that our God may lighten our eyes and give us a little reviving in our bondage. Nehemiah is saying, we don't, we don't, we don't, we are not what Ezra rather. He's saying, we are not sure if we are worth much. Don't send us a ring. A droplet will do. Just give us a little reviving. They had risen themselves out of entitlement. Let's go to verse 10. For we were bond men, yet our God has not forsaken us in our bondage, but had extended mercy unto us in the sight of the kings of Persia to give us a reviving, to set up the house of our God and to prepare to repair the desolations thereof. What was the focus in this revival? Their personal houses, their personal businesses. What was the focus? The house of God. They understood that in a revival, the first thing that must be standing. The first thing that must recover its name, its glory, is the house of God. The church, not individuals, is the first recovery when the revival comes. Ah, we are not like these people. To repair the desolations, that's of the house of our God thereof, and to give us a wall in Judah and in Jerusalem. Verse 10. And now, O oh our God, what shall we say after this? For we have forsaken thy commandments. If we had time, we'll have continued to read. You will see the nature of prayers they prayed. I trust Jesus that the day will come when we will have all night. That's one of the things that the ark will give us the privilege to do. We will gather for 12 hours and we will come and weep. When last did you weep in prayer? Recently, people approach prayer now with dry eyes. Dry eyes. When they watch Sabinus, they laugh till water comes out of their eyes. But in prayer, their emotions are not are not in it. The prayers are not heartfelt. We don't cook up tears. So it's that our hearts have been shattered. Ah, maybe. Maybe you can survive. Me, I know. If God does not help me, I have seen in this in this in this year of how many months? Actually, seven months. I have seen accurate men compromise on certain things that they had sworn not to compromise. In. I have seen what Mammon has done to people. This year, 
how I, I have seen how people still operate in ministry but with diverted focus because money has increased in poor that's my prayer that I may not cause you but don't make me have the kind of abundance that also makes me walk on without you let me let and, and I know I cannot win that battle prone to wonder Lord I feel it I'm prone to leave the God I love so the please here's my heart Lord take and seal it seal it for thy curse above here's my heart Lord take and seal it seal it for thy curse above so I'm say we cannot fall uh, let us take a stroll to the fields of to the mountains of of the philistines the fields of Gath. we'll be able to show you how that the mighty fell and their weapons of war perished i shared one of my brothers a few years ago i saw a video i won't mention his name he hit a landmark in his life a landmark he's younger than i am so he hit a landmark there's all what that's the next landmark to me down the line and then he came out and said how I was the uh, how I uh, how I was forever delivered from immorality. I say, how old are you? At thirty years old, you have been delivered from immorality. You need you need your bolts to be tightened. One sorrow by him. There are seventy year old immoral men. Who, I. I But God, I said, I know God helped you. But when he, when the tempter left Jesus, how did he leave him? For a season. Uh, but you have overcome a tat. Oh, plead. Somebody says supplication. I invite you into the corridors of supplication. In that corridor, you will be vulnerable because we walk in there naked. When we want to enter, if you are an apostle, you drop your title. You come in naked. If you are a bishop, you drop your title, you come in naked. I know you are a minstrel. Even though your office is up for contention. No, it's people are contending it. And there's no office like that. Ah, I didn't cast someone. So. Uh, you will drop your titles. You will answer your name. You say, I'm Victor. I've come in for screening. Like you go to the bank and then you, they remove your house key. And they say, okay, display your phone. Everything you have, you will display in the open. In that corridor. So you only will bury your name. Without a surname. Say, I'm Victor. I've come for screening. And you will find out that if you yield, some of your valuables will be permanently lost. That's what happens in supplication. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray. There is a work that prayer does to the supplicant. And we can find that I want to do a leap into the New Testament. And that's where I'll stop tonight in Matthew chapter 5 verse 8. Jesus in giving off a list of beatitudes now the word beatitudes actually speaks about a state of being blessed but some people say that what it means playing around the words is attitudes to be so but what it means is a state of blessedness so you find out that in reeling them out you see blessed are the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5 verse 8, it said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. When the word has come, when brokenness has been occasioned, when prayer 
begins to happen one of the things the prayer praying man will find out is that beyond the interventions that prayer is designed to bring prayer also works on the praying man so that as we pray we are being changed because prayer ceases to be a monologue it becomes a back and forth communication when you speak to god you communicate um, a spiritual essence to him when he speaks to you he communicates a spiritual essence to you and what he communicates has the ability to change you if a man says he has been praying long i can check we will take stock of what it looked like before he entered prayer and what he has become by many days of prayer i'm saying if after 40 days we find out that you still look the same you didn't come to prayer prayer changes people prayer changes people prayer does what changes people if you sit with pastor diola every day and you talk to him and after a while because you have sustained speaking to him he begins to talk to you back after a while you begin to think like him am i right there's also a possibility that you begin to act like him i met a young man in um zaria the first time i met him was in kaduna december 2020 his name is Cyrus. He schools in Atbu. That's in Bauchi. Mbaka, Tafabalewa University. That's in Bauchi. Everybody who listens to Cyrus preach, they say, ah, this is Reverend Tolu. We saw the second time in this meeting. He came as a photographer because that's what he does outside school. But everybody who has heard him preach, say he speaks like Reverend Tolu. He's not because he's rehearsing Reverend Tolu. It's because he listens to Reverend Tolu a lot. Are you with me? So because of multiple interactions, there is an impartation subliminally. He maintains his originality, but after a while, if you listen to me for long, my bodies will become your bodies. I was sharing my wife this afternoon. Christiana got to come, and then she sent me a message this afternoon. She said, ah, daddy, there's harvest here. There's harvest here. See this, see this, see this, see this. In tears, I responded to her. I says, now you have my heart. They got to camp on Thursday. By Saturday, she had won one soul. And was not a Christian, was a Muslim. By Saturday. That, ah, the... The, the spirit of wardom is here. We must labor, must labor. Today she was gifted the opportunity to be in the kitchen. I said, good place. If a witch came, the witch can cast her craft on food by blessing the food. Bless everybody's food. As you are staring in the water, say, Lord Jesus, as they partake out of this meal, let them encounter you. That's priesthood. My daughter was telling me that with what she saw in camp, she needed to, she, she, she would have to escape into the bush to ventilate. <laughs> prepare, oh, prepare. Oh. When you go to camp, not youth service itself. When you go to camp, you come back safely. You go to youth service for that 12 months or less. And you come back still anointed, still pure. I will shake your hand. I'll try NYC is an altar. And many precious souls have been wasted on it. You will know. You will know. A fellowship, it, it becomes an immoral person. Because nobody knows him there. My fellowship president in school used to preach holiness. Holiness, he was not going for youth service. They now stopped in a particular village. So it's a, a town on the way. So he decided to stay in an hotel. He paid two five for that room. That time, two five it was a lot of money. At twelve midnight, there was a knock on his door, and a damsel near naked walked in. What do you want? What do you want? She said, "Sir, the cost of the room is not two five. 
It is lodging and comfort. Comfort from this daughter of, of Babylon. So my, my money, the money for my trade is inside the 2-5. That's why the room is 2-5. I can't remember how I calculated it. I think it was 700 for the girl. So he said, no, go out. You if say I can't go out because they will not pay me. Now, you can decide not to sleep with me, but I will stay in this room. So our brother said, well, that's what he told us, and we believe him. No, we believe him. He said he sat in the corner of the, he could not close his eyes. Because this lady had no problems with expressing her trait. He sat, folded this, you know how you fold your leg and just sit at the corner of the bed and the lady sat on the chair. They stared at themselves till morning. Now I need to ask you, if you stare for two hours, will you not compromise? <laughs> ah. When I move around our lodge in the barracks, getting up, so that as you are passing, you are hearing sounds, you are seeing sights, and there are people who want to sleep with you too. Will you stand or you compromise? Will you die on that strange altar or you will return safely? So when we shout like this, we have been there. Many people's hairs have, has been shaved. Many Samsons, they return with oil from your service. Dr. Tolu was here. Preached that sermon. He left. When he got to camp after two weeks, Tolu called and said, Ah! Ego, that thing that you said is like that. He said, Me, I, for my sanctity's sake, I cannot stay there. The reason why he redeployed was that he wanted to stay pure. How many of you know Dr. Tolu? <laughs> he's a warrior by excellence he redeployed because he wanted to be pure so I want you to want to be pure God. if we pray long our proclivities the tendencies to be moral the tendencies to be pure will die because when prayer becomes prayer in asking for a revival what prayer bats is the recovery of the purity of the body of Christ. The recovery of the purity of the praying man. Temptations will still abound because our prayers will not send temptations away. The Bible didn't say take away temptation. It says lead us not into. What it means is do not bring us under the power of the tempter. It will still be there. You will still see that the advertisement for McLean is a naked woman. Eh? That when they want to sell shoe, shoe, or biro, big biro, the lady that is holding the biro and is writing is now naked. But it will not have power over you. That's what prayer does. It produces a pure people. So until purity begins to find expression, we have not prayed. You see, we have a long way to go. And that's why the Lord wants us to take this protocol. Our time is up tonight. We'll continue tomorrow. But can you plead with God and ask the Lord, don't let me waste my time. It's a simple prayer. Don't let me waste my time. Tomorrow morning we'll continue to pray, asking that the great one will bend us. We'll plead with him. In achieving purity, God will need to bend you away from iniquity. When we begin to pray, some will find out that iniquity, the, what they still want as iniquity is not their own. It's a family thing. And God will need to break you from the energies of your bloodline. Yes. There are church groups that, has, that, that stink with iniquity. It's not their own. It's because the land where they are ministering from is tainted. God will begin to separate us from the realities of the territory, from the realities of our nation. That you can be in Nigeria and not be corrupt. Don't let me waste my time. As we engage, let the things that are attached to prayer, let the things that bat prayer be registered in my engagement. Let the word indeed be recovered unto me. Let your laws become visible. Bring me to that place whereby your word men become broken. 
And Lord launched me into the corridors of supplication. Ultimately producing me a pure man. Pure in the public. Pure in the secret, oh God. Don't let me waste my time. Don't let me waste my time. We have just one more minute tonight. But we plead with you, oh God. We plead with you, oh God, that this little space that we have, we will not waste it. We will labor into your reviving. We will labor into your help. We will be carried by you. We will be bent by you. And if it need be, we will be broken by you. Oh Jesus. Oh ha bahato ka basori akori bahato ekoto ka kabeto sa ika bahato kaliata ramta koba bai vakai. We embrace the revival. We embrace the revival. We embrace the revival. And we give you praise and glory. God has an expectation. God has a plan to see his expectation met. But the generation must come in alignment. And we say yes to Jesus. Ibarasia tabo meka baba kamande kaidatos. We will hold nothing, Jesus. You want the generation? We offer you one. Let the waitings come to an end. 